Ken Coleman here, a uh, digital artist from Ireland, uh, using the XP Pen 15.6 inch tablet. This is my new favourite toy for doing uh, my digital art my, and my ZBrush. It's involved in every part of my process. Um, I highly recommend it. So let's get on with the tutorial. Hi guys, this is Ken um, for XP Pen. I'm here to show you um, some an introduction to ZBrush, okay? Now, I'm going to make a set of videos that will cover the basics and how the interface works. Uh, it's a bit different to some other 3D programs, um, but I will cover all of those um, as we go through it. What I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with one of the project files um, to get us going. Something that you can literally just get stuck in and um, just start sculpting and, and playing with all the different brushes. So the newer ZBrush, this is ZBrush 2019. The new release of ZBrush is due today or tomorrow, so I'll be from then working on ZBrush 2020. Um, but using the basic tools should be no different, okay? So, when you open ZBrush for the first time, you usually get a drop down menu like this. Now, for years I had a bit of trouble. If you work on a keyboard, sometimes the, um, the buttons overlap and get compressed. To, to get rid of this um, interface, if you don't want to use it for your quick start guides or your brushes, you just press comma on your keyboard and it goes away. Okay? Now, but for today, to start using ZBrush straight away, we're going to use the Manga Demo Head project file. Okay, and here it is. So if I click anywhere outside of the model, I can rotate the model. Just like this. Okay? If I press Alt, I can scroll, Alt on my keyboard, I can scroll the model, which is the same thing as move over here. So I move the model by pressing Alt, and if I press Shift, the model clicks into place on any of the, the right angled planes. Now also, something to before I start sculpting, if I do anything, if I use any brush, which is your left hand side top button here. If I pick any brush to mess with, so with two very popular brushes for basic sculpting are clay and clay builder. If I sculpt on one side, as you can see, it's going on the other. And if you want to use that, and often when you start your own project, that is not turned on. It is in transform, activate symmetry. So if I turn it off, it only works on one side. I turn it back on, and it sculpts on both sides. So I'm going to start again with demo head. I press no here to, so that I'm not saving. And also for the purpose of this video, I am going to change the palette, my, uh, my material to one of these. I have it, um, most um, basic ZBrush projects will start in matte red like this. But what I want to do is I'm going to go to this matte cap skin because I really like the contrast when I'm sculpting. Okay. And since ZBrush 2018, there's this chisel creature brush. Now this is one of the most fun brushes to start with. Because when I go in, I can start putting spikes on my character. I can put in some evil teeth. Okay, I'm switching to my other camera so you can see the gestures I'm making on my screen. I'm using a 22 inch E uh, XP Pen Pro. Okay, I love this tablet. What I also have is a new 15.6 inch Pro for when I'm on the road or demoing um, when I demo uh, publicly. So what I'm doing on the screen to bring up these brushes is I'm actually just dragging down on the screen. Now if you're using an XP Pen tablet that isn't a screen tablet, you just drag down on your tablet. So the main difference between um, ZBrush and a lot of other programs is that if you double click like with a mouse on the object you want, it will appear in the middle of the screen. Whereas if you want to bring in an object in ZBrush, you have to drag, you click on the object you want and you drag down. Hope that makes sense. So I'm going to change, I'm going to put some scales on the back of his head. Now if those scales look very thick, right? So if I didn't want them, I'm pressing Command or Control Z, which are used at Mac or PC. And I mean, you're going to change down the intensity, which actually means I get a softer texture on my character. See? So I often use this manga demo head to start out to show people how you can use these creature brushes for a bit of fun, 
just to get stuck into Zebra straight away and start learning the tools. So what I often do as well is we have these dragon eyes, okay, that we can put in. Now if I bring the intensity back up and draw back over them and double up in the eyes, I can get double eyes. See? So this is one of my character heads almost done already. So it's very fast to start. So you can just play around with all these different tools. I maybe use this um, neck fin. And as you can see, because symmetry is on, it, it overlays on itself on both sides. Okay, and the other thing is when you're using the symmetry and you have two cursors, they will meet in the middle and create one object if you want, or one using one brush over itself. So this is very good brush for quickly building up some creature designs. Okay. Now, when I teach ZBrush, I often let people just play with some of the project files just like this. For instance, if I go back in here, and I take the demo uh, female head instead of my manga head and I press OK. So here's my female head. The same buttons, I can press Shift to get it to click into place. Now you see there's a floor underneath so I can turn that on and off with the floor button here on the right. There's also a perspective button which will change the perspective of a model slightly. I often leave it, I always leave the perspective button on simply because when I'm using my rendering software which I have with ZBrush which is Keyshot, um, there's per 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 perspective sliders which I always use. Okay, so I want to try some different ones now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and we also have some great things like model kit, parts, machine parts, boolean parts and spaceship. These are all installed in ZBrush and what's great about them is I can, on this head, I could start to make some bionic features. So I drag them on. Now when I let go of this, you'll notice that the head has gone dark. And the eyes are still there, okay? And the reason is, on this model, and one of the reasons I want to show you is, this is where we start using the subtool menu. Now if anyone has used Photoshop, subtools are like layers. So I can turn off the eyes, turn back on the eyes, Let's again switch to uh, um, my Mac cap skin so you can see better. Now the reason the head has gone dark and these two um, objects that are floating are still highlighted is because I have full control over them because they're masked. The head is masked off and I deactivate symmetry still on and I can place these. And if I was to press Alt, sorry, if I was to press Control, my mask pen changes here from a normal brush to my pen brush. Now it's now on transpose because I've gone from draw, which when we brought up the, the uh, objects and added them to the head, and I change it to move, and this gizmo shows up. And now I can move them, and I can rotate them, and the yellow box lets me scale them. The arrows let me drag them, but the little tiny box inside the arrow lets me actually stretch them. And change their shape. Okay, and if I turn off the transpose tool, I can actually move the positioning of my gizmo. Some people prefer to use transpose on its own to, to move an object. I always use the gizmo. Gizmo for me is more universal because it's very like other 3D software. I have the same control, so I'm, I'm used to that from using different programs such as Maya or Daz or Poser. So I'm going to put these in place and just make sure to cover the ears so it's very like Tron. Okay. And again, I'm just dragging down on the screen. Now you could do one of two things here. You can press control, go back to draw first, sorry. Press control and if you select anywhere on the screen, the mask will go away. You can alternatively, alternatively go to masking and clear in these drop down menus. Now the other control here is, you cannot use the scroll wheel to go through these, you have to drag up and down with drag gestures with your pen, just like when you're dragging in the screen. And when you press any of these tools, the main ones we're going to use for a moment are subtool, geometry, and masking. So if I'm using subtool, there's all my subtool menus, and I press that and it clicks back. I press geometry, there's my geometry menus, which we will get to. But if I press subtool, Geometry immediately closes and Subtool opens. 
Okay, so that was one way. I'm going to undo. Now we have two ways of undoing. I can press, keep pressing Command Z or Control Z to go back, or I have a little history bar here where you can see that this is the last one. I'm going to go back one step. My technique that I like to use in ZBrush for kit bashing, because I'm more of a kit basher than a sculptor in this program, because I use it for 2D and abstract illustration. I'll go into my sub tool menu over here. I go to split and I go split mass points. If I press that and I go back to my sub tools here, you can see that the um, mechanical headpieces I've added on and my head are now separate. So when I move my mechanical headpieces, they're a separate entity. So I go back to my head, draw on. Now that was a mistake I made and what happened here, and it's good to, to clear the mistakes first. This stuff always happens. Because I was on the move tool, move tool at first, instead of going back to draw, when I clicked an object, it automatically transformed my object from being the head into the object I actually wanted to stick onto the head. So I'm gonna go undo to draw, and I'll draw the object back onto the head. So I can put one there, one there, one there. And I'm gonna put one in the back of the head so I can show you in the next tool how to use something like wiring for fun. Now, because as you can see, that's the last tool I drew, these two have now masked off as well and are connected to the head. So if you want to split them, you need to draw one. See the other one is darkened now and it's part of the head. You need to draw one and you need to split it automatically. Split mass points. And now as you can see in my sub tool menu, those other ones are stuck to the head and this one is on its own. And if I press frame, it brings the head back into the middle. Now just to cover what division is and dividing in geometry a little bit, if I click on my head now again, and select my head sub tool, and I go to geometry and press divide, you can see that it has smoothed out. I have doubled the amount of polygons, and polygons are the spheres, the 3D spheres that make up this object. But what you can also see is, if I undo, my mesh count was 26,000 KP, and when I divided it, it went up to 68,000. So I went to just over double. That's where the resolution starts to come in when you're sculpting. Now what I do when I'm sculpting is that you can look up loads of different videos about Dynamesh, Remesh, how to retopologize. And what retopologizing means, it's one of those words that's very frustrating when you start out in 3D modeling in ZBrush because you hear people using it, assuming you know what it is. Now what it means is that you are actually, the, the framework of the model, the frame that is under this, the 3D framework of all the lines that you might see in another 3D program. When you retopologize, it changes the overlaying shell of the 3D model. Okay? Now, we don't have to worry about it right now. I've divided it once and we just want to play with sculpting. So we'll come back to retopologizing in Dynamesh and Z Remesh. All of that can be covered later on in more advanced ZBrush lessons. But right now, we have this head. And I'm just going to delete the lower subdivision because you need to do that for some of the other brushes to work. Now what I want to do is go back to the sub tool I made with just the piece on the back. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a bit of cabling. So I have this insert cylinder. And this is fun because you can start to make like matrix style tubes. See? And that again has masked off this one. And I can pull it to fit it in if I want. See? Now I want it to be a bit smaller, so I'm going to bring down my draw size so the brush is smaller. Now when I bring the draw size down, my brush really should, it doesn't seem to want to do it now. I'll go back a step, and we'll try this again. It takes a bit of practice to learn the temperament and how the, the behavior more of these brushes. So draw size down. What I'll do is I can actually split that again, so I'll split mass points, and now I have the wire on its own. The paths tool, which was covering the wire, is gone. For instance, if I draw another paths tool directly onto the head with the sphere, and I've made it much smaller, as you can see. If I click near it, when you have this little red lining, it'll make a new one, and it'll either continue, or it'll keep transforming the wire. And I had the symmetry on, so I have two of them, okay? But if I click away from it, the wire disappears, and I create a whole new set of wire. You see? On my head. Now press frame again to bring it into the second middle. Now because I did two sets of wires, 
As you can see even in the sub tool menu, only the outside one is highlighted. I press press, split mass points and it disappears. So now, in the space of about five minutes, with a demo head and some of the kit bash brushes, I've created a kind of almost robotic feature. I'm going to leave that at this for now, simply because I don't want to overwhelm anyone with too many ideas. These are well, if these are practiced enough, just moving objects around the screen with the um, preset project files like the demo heads and just kit bashing on some parts, you start to learn some great sculpting. So the only other tool that would be a lot of fun to play with here is like clay build up. As you can see, I bring up again the intensity that I could cover before, make it stronger, I have the brush size bigger so I can draw more. And the other thing that you could do is press the sub. So that's adding clay, the sub is cutting into the model. And I will repeat that in the next session.